The final thing we need to do is install the latest version of the Ionic CLI, and we'll do that with NPM. Once we've finished, we'll be able to use the CLI to create our very first app. I'm going to run these commands on my Mac, but you should be able to follow along on any operating system that we've discussed so far. One of the things I like to do in my home directory is I have a folder called Git. You can call it anything you want. Projects, My Projects, Ionic, it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to go into my Git folder now, and I'm going to run npm install dash g for global at ionic slash cli at latest. Now ionic used to have a package called ionic. They've deprecated that and it's now at ionic slash cli and it installed version 6.3 and that's going to be important in a moment. Just before I went to record this segment, Max Lynch, the CEO of ionic, sent out a tweet about a new tool from ionic called the Ionic App Wizard, and he asked for feedback. So I'm going to give that a try right now and see what kind of project it gives us. So here it is at ionicframework.com slash start. It's going to ask me for a name. Let's try Hello Ionic. Uh, I'm partial to purple, so I'm going to pick purple. I want a side menu template. It looks pretty straightforward, and it defaults us to React. So let's continue. So because I already had an account, I was able to sign in quickly. I edited out that part for you. So now what it does is it gives us a custom install command for the Ionic CLI, and it warns us that we need to have Ionic CLI 6.3 or above, which is why I said it would be important later. So back in my terminal, I've pasted the command that the Ionic app wizard gave us. So now I'm going to run it and see what it does for us. It wants to know if I want to integrate the app with Capacitor. I do, but I don't want to do it yet, so I'm going to take the default of no. And now it's going to run an npm install for me. It shouldn't take too long, but I'll edit out the longest part for us so you don't have to sit through it. Don't you just love the magic of editing? At this point, it wants to know if I want to create a free Ionic account. I already have an Ionic account, but I'm not going to connect it at this time, so I'm just going to say no. So it's done everything I need. Pretty straightforward. And the next thing it wants me to do is cd into that directory. You can see it already created a Git repository, and we're at the master branch. Well, without further ado, let's fire it up and see what it looks like. We do that with an Ionic serve. And you should be aware of that. Most of the things the Ionic CLI does for us is simply delegating it to the CLI of the technology we're using, in this case, React. So you can see there it's doing react-scripts start. And it automatically opened a browser window using my default browser to localhost port 8100. The application it built for us looks kind of like an email box. In fact, that's what it says. It's an inbox. Opening up the Chrome Developer Tools, I can show you a cool thing about the default side menu template from Ionic. It's actually using something called an Ion Split View, which gives us a fixed side menu on wider screens. But as the screen gets narrower, like on mobile devices, it collapses to a standard hamburger menu. Pretty cool, don't you think? So that'll do it for this. We just created an app from pretty much nothing. We installed the Ionic CLI, and we used the brand new Ionic App Wizard to get that app built. In the next segment, we're going to take a look at the code behind this and see how it's all put together.